Have you ever wanted to play Defultira, but just slightly different? Well, I did. So during the last weeks and a couple of streams, I was working on Westnut's most Defult-like era. In fact, it is so Defult-like that each and every faction is a variation of already existing faction. Not even sprites changed at all. All images, in fact, that are used come from Core Westnut. There is not a single new ability added, and the only thing that is used here that isn't widely used in Default Era is Parry, a statistic that every unit already has, however none of them is using it, and this is the only new thing that I needed to use to actually succeed with this project. Another thing that I decided to test is making level 2 unit recruitable, just because it fit the lore of one of the factions so well. So, let's get into the meat of it. Currently, the era only has six factions. Northern Loyalists, Great Tree Rebels, Hastar Undead, Plain and Dwarfs, Horde Drakes and Bigun Orcs, and each and every one of them is trying to show different reimagination of the base faction. Northern Loyalists are tough people, living in colder climate. Their nobles are tough, unlike the central loyalists ones. They learned how to fight, not how to run, creating strong combatants, particularly good against melee units on the battlefield. Their cavalry is divided between lightly armored cavalrymen and the elite horsemen, who will strike harder and can withstand much more than your typical loyalist horsemen. But everything comes up at a price. Spearmen are widely used and don't differ much from their counterpart. However, now they focus much more on ranged attacks and can only level up into Javeliner. Bowman takes the role of fencer and now has skirmisher, good for hunting in the forest. Mage receives only small buff and merman remains unchanged. The biggest comes last. Heavy infantryman gains 20% ranged parry and 10% melee parry becoming much better against ranged units while being weakened against melee ones. It no longer has fearless, costs 17 gold, has 5 MP and changed resistances. In short, this unit was remade anew, finishing the image of tough but resource-starved people from the north constantly fighting on the front lines of Westnut. Horde drakes had to leave their homes in search of new lands, that greatly weakened them overall. However, their number is still great, so now they became Horde faction, with mostly much cheaper units, making Horde drakes feel much more like true invasion force of inhuman monsters than just a few strong hunters looking for new prey. The same goes for Saurians and especially Saurian skirmishers who accompany them. Now they have only one single spear, so they can't throw it away. However, Saurian Augurs became much stronger and are much more elite units right now, providing good breakthrough force for the faction. Saurians also learned how to regenerate slowly, as lizards should, and given that the number of drakes will be greater than ever, they will certainly need to use the spots where they can get some healing much more than before, thus improving the faction's overall coherency. Bigun orcs are now bigger, stronger and more expensive. They value big bodies over anything. However, not only orcs grew, goblins did as well. They were hitting the gym very much so. And well, now they became level 1 units, very cheap ones still, so allowing Bigon Orcs to still swarm the enemy with mass of cheap bodies. Assassins are now much more expensive, no longer have poison and instead got ranged backstab, allowing them to throw knives into the backs of their opponents twice as effectively. Wolf Riders now start with poison on level 1 instead. Troll Whelps also received small change. Now they cost 15 gold in exchange for 5 movement points, allowing them to keep up with other units in the Bigun roster. 
Starting with elves, it's no secret that rebels are my least liked faction. They are the most generic faction, without solid strength and weaknesses, with the exception of Wars, of course. A unit that isn't great in most matchups. Great 3 elves are my try to fix that. They leave the fantasy of more specialized troops, like Fighter, who is no better against ranged and pierce damage, or Archer, who is reverse of that, being stronger against melee and blade damage. Scout is no stronger, more melee focused and has 10% blade resistance. Shaman is no more elite, costing 18 gold and receiving buffs most notable of which is getting one more strike on its slowing attack. Finally, Wuss becomes less powerful against its main target like Undead, getting nerf of free damage on its main attack, but getting additional 5 to poison ranged attack. Undead leave the fantasy of elite and meat, having some units become much more powerful and then some become much weaker. Adepts are the elite jumping up to 21 gold a unit, while skeletons don't really have any meat left, but they still have to perform that role going down to only 12 gold. Additionally, notably Skeleton Archer received the important nerf of minus 10% melee parry on level 1, which creates very different than standard opportunities to exploit. Ghost, as the only unit that didn't change its cost, Staying at 19 gold, losing train and gaining 10 HP instead, changing its role to a proper physical tank that doesn't die from one lucky mage, but now starts as Bloodbat, that is slightly weakened, but still provides solid drainer, just way less tanky than Ghost was. Ghoul becomes proper tank as well, now costing 20 gold, but having much more HP. 10% melee parry and minus 10% ranged parry, as well as changed resistances, allowing it to keep up with impact threats that are plaguing the undead. Plain dwarfs, or rather dwarfs from plains, are fantasy where they left the mountains and settled on plains, yet keeping their dwarvish traits. Well, mostly. All dwarfs now have 5 MP and Fighter and Thunderer also got lowered resistances, while Guard gets 20% ranged parry, which is quite powerful, but loses on Steadfast. Alpserker is the only unchanged dwarf. Griffon Rider loses some damage in exchange for lower cost, creating 20g 8mp unit for the dwarves. Footpad gains melee blade. Poacher gets plus 1 ranged damage, for increased cost, while Thief gains Skirmisher on level 1, for the cost of 2 additional gold pieces. Honestly, second inspiration was creating dwarves that are beginner friendly. So there we go, the era is complete, uploaded, now its fate depends on you. If you like it, just play it, comment on it and tell me if you like it. If that indeed is the case, then I will be sure to make more subfactions streams and videos about them. But for now, have a nice day and I will see you next time. Cheers!